Our, our next speaker is uh, Dr. Claudia Rossi from Brazil, a doctor of veterinary medicine from the State University of Londrina. He completed his residency in internal medicine, small animal surgery, and anesthesiology, later getting a Master of Science in small animal internal medicine. He also qualified as a doctor of philosophy for small animal internal medicine and specialized later in veterinary dermatology. A breeder, all breeds judge of the CBKC, and a member of the World Dog Show 22 board. Eh, vamos a presentar a nuestro siguiente ponente, Claudio Rossi. Él, en su escuela profesional, es doctor en medicina veterinaria por la Universidad Estatal de Londrina en Brasil, 2001. Residencia, medicina interna, cirugía y anestesiología de pequeños animales en la Universidad del Estado de Sao Paulo. Eh, también es, tiene maestría en ciencias eh, de medicina interna de pequeños animales en la Universidad del Estado de Sao Paulo. Es doctor en filosofía, medicina interna de pequeños animales en la Universidad de Sao Paulo, Brasil. Y tiene una especialización, especialista en dermatología veterinaria por la Sociedad Brasileña de Dermatología Veterinaria en Sao Paulo. Eh, pues ahora sí que le damos la bienvenida. Un fuerte aplauso, por favor. Gracias. Oh, hi everyone. Hice mi presentación en inglés, pero encuentro que hay muchas personas que hablan español, así que voy a hacer mi presentación en español. Pero las diapositivas están en inglés. ¿Ok? Bien, voy we'll Hablaremos de algunos puntos que tengo aquí en la agenda. And now I'm going to be talking about dog breeding with genetic inheritance, then breeding dogs selection criteria and the types of crosses. Then the genetic basic concepts, I will be speaking about this and I have another presentation. There is another presentation after mine, which will be dwelling, dwelling on this, and also consequences of diseases of, on health and, well, and welfare of dogs. So we will start talking about dog breeding and genetic, genetic inheritance. We need to start talking about breed formation because it's got a direct relation with genetic diseases. And this happens because selection, breeding of these dogs and breeding of these breeds, years and years ago was based on breed selection for morphological and functional features. So those features became selection criteria for dogs and with this, the formation of breeds. And also, the crossing of these breeds or making other breeds by selecting other ones too. Like we have seen before. For example, crossing Poodle and Labrador and, and Retriever results in another breed. And this is how we've been making new breeds. And now, about breeding and breeding selection, the types of crosses. I will now speak a little bit about the main ones we have for this selection. And one of them is aptitude. That is to say, temperament, characteristics, character, which are important when we are talking about work dogs, or when we make the breathing for a specific action. We have hunting dogs, aptitude one. Not only are they, select, are they selected for their morphological characteristics, but also for the work they do. This is important. When we start this selection, we are not sure because long ago, we did not 
veterinary was not so well evolved, and therefore we did not have health examinations and DNA tests. So when we first started, we had a different selection from the one we have right now. And now we have to make you know, breathing together with this evolution. It is important that we have some dogs To, to make the breathing for the ideal characteristics. Let's go back to work. So this is important, absolutely, because it's a part of it. There are dogs who, which do their job, but we also have to think of well-being or well welfare of dogs. And here, for example, in Newfoundland, a guard dog, which also does the work. Here we go, Newfoundland. If we had dogs, for example, with hypertypes, I'm sure we would not do this job. So it is important to have the dog to have the standards and characteristics. Then we had these other dogs doing another different type of job. These are the Siberian Huskies doing the pulling, the trailing. So not only do you need for them to have the fur, but also all the characteristics to do the job in the snow. And also, the two jobs that are a part of our day. This is an example of these ones that are sniff dogs, sniffing for drugs, and in this one, search and rescue, sniffing for missing people. So they are equally important. And now we are talking about this. This is important. While we have dog breeds, it is important because they do the job for us. Shirley. Companion dogs, we have this for guards, households, etc. And there are other things, but they are only part of our day to day life and they share time with us, so it is important they have the right temperament and the right character. Another way of selection is pedigree. There is a way that many breeders use in selecting dogs and oftentimes they do this considering the bloodline of the dog in general terms their genealogy so in if I see there are at least three generations of pedigree to have this information and sometimes we have information about information about dog health uh, today we're going to have a uh, discussion about this. A good way of doing this selection due to a character, morphological and characteristics are called phenotype. Why, what is the phenotype? Well, 
Some of this information is in DOC standards. So sometimes breeders do their job based on the characteristics we have as a, as a part of the standards. This is an example. We have the Brazilian dog, dog, and this is also a dog that has to be as close as possible to the characteristics included in the breed standards. And again, it is about the type and the conformation of their angles and features, it is all clearly described in the standard for each of the breeds. Plus, another breed criteria is genotype. Oftentimes, we have this selection to control for diseases and also colors. And this is a part of a breeding program today that is specific and has to do with health and well and welfare this is an example this is the page brazil the brazilian page and here we have black these black spots which are dominating over gray and the same happens with brown which is dominating over light brown so oftentimes we don't know this, whether this dog has a gene to have gray or blue hair, and genetic helps us on this. This is a tricolor, but this dog has a gene that, does, that makes the third color not appear. And therefore, a genetic examination has to be taken in order to determine the color of this dog. You can only see brown and white. You don't see either black or, or, or gray or bluish. And it is important, the type of crosses. Here we're going to talk not alone about this. But in breeding crosses, which are the crosses between dogs with a close family connection, for example, the the one of the, the the father and a daughter or the mother with a son, in these situations we do preserve some of the characteristics, but one of the problems we may have is the presence of mutational diseases, mutations or diseases, because we are performing this selection of dogs that might have recessive or dominating genes for diseases, and with this, we are doing selection. Line breathing. When we are a bit further in this type of crossing, out of crossing, out of crossing, and again, in between breeds, the, the ones we had mentioned before. When we have lots of inbreeding to determine the coefficient because the higher the coefficient, the higher the possibility of having diseases in dogs. And here we see an example of dogs with high level of inbreeding. The third part, we will talk about genetics. This is not directly my talk, but I have to speak a little bit about this to talk about genetic diseases. Then we will be hearing about the subject. It's important when we speak about chromosomes, we are talking about a body carrying information. And this information is present in the cell nucleus. They are basically made up of DNA and protein. But why is this important?
because the dogs have specific pairs of chromosomes for the species, and similarly, yeah. other species have their own uh, specific genes. In dogs, there are 38 chromosomes called autosomic, and again, these chromosomes determine the key characteristics of this species, in this case, for dogs. And the sex determination, X or Y, determines, again, the sex of, of the dog. So here you can see if they're all similar, or these other ones are autosomic. In terms of genes and locuses and loci, these are the units of inheritance which occur, occur in specific loci. This determines the characteristics of dogs. And so in this example, we have a minor difference in a nitrogenated formation of DNA. It is not good or bad. It only determines that this dog has X or Y characteristic. But it's so fine. It's different when there are genes connected with a disease. Here, we are only mentioning characteristics. So both okay, no problem with that. Uh, in terms of alleles, we should discuss alleles because here we can talk about diseases at the last part. But what are the alleles? The al they are alternative ways or alternative varieties using the same space or homologous position non-chromosomic. And it determines a specific characteristic a given characteristic, and their actions may result in different expressions of genes. An example of this, of this, we have a male and a female. This one, for example, has two alleles with dominant alleles, and here we have recessive alleles, and here we have the formation of the third one with a capital A and a small a. But what is this? When we talk about the homozygous, then you can connect when they have the same type of genetics, and heterozygous when they have both. So this is the key difference. But why is this important? Well, it's important because diseases have a connection with this type of inheritance. Take this for example. If we, we spoke about the, the phenotype, which are external characteristics, but it is definitely connected with genotype because if your dog has signs of a disease, it's because the dog carries the gene for that disease. On the other hand, genotic. And here, genetic, there is genetic data of a unique and characteristic genetic sequence of an individual. And by, by contrast here, these are some of the examples we take when we are to make dog selection for breeding. We look at m lots of things, starting with the phenotype, that is to say, qualitative characteristics which are connected with breed standards. One other important thing about diseases is their dominance. Basically, what can, can we do with this? There are some phenotypes that are dominating. What does that mean? When there is a dominance as compared to the other allele, which may be recessive or polygenic, the dominating allele becomes a prey by itself, by being a heterozygous or homozygous dominating. The heterozygous are, are the ones described with a capital and a small letter. So those in those dogs, you will see the disease. It is different from a recessive allele, allele because in there we have genetic with a recessive homozygous. So on this side, 
we have a determination, if we have a father and a mother with the same phenotype, when we make the crossing, we get all the progeny with that disease. So this space to get them from the breathing center. But on the other hand, it is not good when we perform the crossing. And polygenic are multifactorial, and they have an influence by multiple genes and also by the environment. This is an example. Elbow dysplasia, hip dysplasia, these are polygenic genes, which also have a, an action of the environment to be shown. In terms of dominance, this is an example. This is curly hair or hairless. In one of them, it is dominating over the other one. And the same things happen when we have the shawa short hair and long hair. So these are dominance characteristics, but the ones that are not specifically connected with the disease. And one more thing. There is a connection in the absence of teeth and the absence of hair. So this is a direct relation of a genetic, con the genetic content. And here we have different cardiopathies. One example of this. In here we have the cardiopathy of boxers. This is a polygenic characteristic. And for example, this is different. No, no, no. Here this is autosomic dominating, which is different from cardiopathy, cardiopathy. And in here it is definitely polygenic inheritance. And the last part of it. Let's talk about these diseases. Concerning the types of heritability, autosomic recessive, autosomal, autosomal dominant, we spoke about them. The ones connected with sex, like, the chrom like chromosome X and the anomalies of chromosome, plus polygenics. So, we end up having lots of types, and if the designation is not known or is not complete, we have lots of types, and that is why oftentimes we need to conduce genetic tests in order to determine whether the, the, the dog has this, uh, is bound for, the, for, for a disease or not. And in reviewing this, I'm sure we don't need to talk too much about diseases, but I will just spend some time talking about the main ones. We have encountered musculoskeletal, like patellar, patellar the dislocation, is quite common in small breeds. So this is a type of disease we encounter often, and I'm sure that in order to have a diagnosis, we oftentimes need to remove the dog from the, from the breathing center, but veterinaries are very important for this. Hip displacement, displace, dysplasia. Again, this is more bound in bigger breeds, particularly in the, in the big ones. We also have the elbow dysplasia, and we do need to remove. Again, elbow dysplasia for larger breeds with the same, with this, which are the ones showing hip displacement. And also another one talking about uh, muscular, pro muscular problems, abdominal hernias. These are more common in small breeds and it is equally important that a proper diagnos diagnosis is made prior to the to treating because we may have the hernia the hernia and complication with offals and that will result in more problems for dogs eye diseases many of them 
are found in dogs. And therefore, it is important for each person, each breeder and veterinaries to bear in mind what is important for, for breeds. I mean, it is not impossible to have a disease that is uncommon to a breed, but it may happen. Although it is important for them and for dogs for us to have these uh, diseases in mind. Cataracts, for example, this is here, opacifying, and with this, dogs don't look good, and this usually leads to blindness. This other one is called the cherry eye. In here, we'll have the collapse of this gland, which sits in the third eyelid, then ectropio, when you see the lower eyelid, and eyes are exposed in here with entropia and surely in all of this it would be uh, very likely that when we look at people and when they have their dogs at home they when they find when you find this in your dogs tell them to the veterinary this is an excessive exposure of eyes this happens in some brachycephalic Brancephalic breeds with red eye due to conjunctivitis or excessive exposure of eyes. And in here with glaucoma, which is genetic as in humans. Skin diseases. Allergies are quite common in our clinic. It is very important to treat this kind of disease. The most common one is atopic dermatitis, but we also have allergies to food or the, the stinging of fleas and ticks. The black munch it's caused by another parasite and it is also genetically transferred and oftentimes the problem is that there is not an early manifestation in the life of dogs and this is a problem because if we don't see an early manifestation we can find it much later and by then dogs may have already uh, had their progeny and therefore the disease is passed to the next generation. And then the so-called primary scaling or sebum, due to the presence of sebum, and derm dermatitis, dermatitis for the excess of skin. We spoke about this a few minutes ago. So see how much skin in this dog. And surely this is not healthy. This is not good for the dog's welfare. And oftentimes this results in many secondary infections and in general skin, skin challenges. Cardiorespiratory diseases most common ones are number one uh, the this mitral mitral valve is much more common in smaller breeds rather than the long than the larger ones and i'm sure these animals have character clinical characteristics of these diseases but the problem comes when we have a male and a female who have uh, offspring and then the problem is identified because all the, all the offspring might, be, might have inherited the disease and at some point they will come to the veterinary perhaps in the next two or three years. But this is the challenge once they have had uh, offspring and in disease has not been properly diagnosed. 
And there is one more subject which we don't need to discuss right now because there will be two more presentations. But basically, it is the importance of, of, of this example. A dog with an occlusion of airways, nasal airways. And surely, time will have a consequence on health. And the last part of it, endocrinous diseases. We have thyroid disease, which is a deficiency of hormones. It's two or three out of four. And also another challenge here has to do with the previous ones. We oftentimes have a clinical manifestation of the disease with eight or nine years or older. So after this time, the dog has mated many times and will have many, many uh, a big offspring. And this other one called the uh, Cushing syndrome, by the increase of abdominal volume, and it also results in higher water intake plus a, be, a, a more times the animals urinate. But again, this starts after dogs have had offspring, or even if they had a good health along their life. And diabetes, which is insulin deficiency, is also important. There are some breeds that are predisposed. It's important. An example of this, poodles. We, don't, we have some other ones. And the same thing happens. Oftentimes, manifestation is late. So genetic work is important, veterinary work is important to treat these diseases. And here we have some more information about other diseases. It is not possible to cover all of them. So these are other important diseases. And again, in larger breeds or gigantic, we have... Uh, dilatation or gastric torsion. The problem here is, again, when you see this acute, the acute symptoms, and if you don't have much time to respond, there's not much to do. Uh, kidney disease, urolithiasis, and idiopathic epilepsy, a neurological, syndromes with, with specific, specific breeds with episodes of convulsions. Plus, this one here. We have a description in standards about the presence of, of these balls in testicles. This is important as a part of our evaluation and it is often that we find a different consistency by we identify by touching. So it is important. When we evaluate, we, we have to pay attention because this may not be the right one to treat at the given time. So, and some final considerations. It is important for us to be responsible when breathing. The work we do is important for preservation, promotion, and and improving in improving the breeding of breeds. We need to have a careful plan for breeding, and also genetic control of diseases, and also uh, control of colors when there are diseases connected with colors. I'm sure it is necessary to accompany dogs on a day-to-day -day basis when there are problems or when we have diseases connected with these breeds, performing veterinary or genetic examinations. This shows the latest. And I'm sure with this, we try to have a good health and a good quality of life and welfare for dogs. And also, I'm sure, for humans 
it is important to see their relationship with us and also the work and the support they give to us. Thank you very much. And I encourage to every one of you to come to Brazil. We're going to have the World Dog Show in December. You are all welcome to attend. Thank you very much. Thank you for this great uh, presentation by Dr. Claudio Rossi. Are there any questions in the room? Questions, doubts about this presentation? All right, Julio. Hi, Claudio. We are seeing in the market many, uh, lots of grain-free feed because we have encountered many, many animals that are intolerant to grains. So would that be considered as a disease in dogs or is that something not to be too concerned about? Well, today you can see, you can consider that these dogs with some type of allergy may be connected with Today, <clears throat> there are lines working on this theory, and the problem, and the problem of the feed is just to c cover the needs of dogs. I'm not sure, and I don't know if this problem is present in Europe, but in Brazil, right now, there are many people to handling with natural natural food, but they don't have all the nutrients that dogs need. And then with time, we have problems with the skin <coughs> or others. But this is one of the most prevailing ones. That's a problem we have in Brazil. Thank you. Hola, Claudia. I say. Tengo como ocho, ocho, unos años que murió por la enfermedad de disease, prácticamente murió. Tuvimos que llevarla a cirujano, etc. Y ahora tiene unos tres y todos sus cachorritos tendrían esa, esa enfermedad de, de Van Hiden. No sé en esa enfermedad en específico. ¿Alguien que nos pueda ayudar? No sé específicamente en esa enfermedad. Good afternoon. In listening to you, I couldn't hear anything about degenerative myelopathy. I think it is important because there are lots of dogs undergoing this condition. Some of them are just carriers, some of them are affected. Well, degenerative neuropathy as compared to these other diseases, there is less and less than this all. And there are many other diseases I didn't even mention today, but which are important. I'm sure there are some breeds, for, for example, pugs, 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 with the prevalence to this, to this disease. That is why it is important to work from the breeding and selection to identify the most common or the most serious diseases in breed lines or in just in, in breeds in general. Bien, muchas gracias, Claudio. Excelente presentación. I want to thank the FCI board members for giving Mexico the opportunity of having this important World Congress for Welfare and Health for the dogs worldwide. We are really pleased and thank you so much for giving us this great opportunity. And also I want to thank all the speakers from all over the world who participate in this great event. Thank you.